Good afternoon. My name is Matthew Bookett and I'm a research assistant from the Cambodian Institute for Strategic Studies. For our interview today, I'm joined by Ambassador George Edgar, Ambassador for the EU Delegation to Cambodia. Today's topic will be the World Economic Forum on ASEAN, which will be hosted here in Cambodia. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. So um, I'd like to start off by asking you what you believe is the significance of Cambodia hosting this year's World Economic Forum on ASEAN. I'd say th there are two answers to that. I mean, th the first is that it's a, it's a recognition that, 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 that Cambodia is a country which is able to host a, a, a prestigious event like this. Um, I, mean, I don't think anybody was any, in any doubt about that, but this is a, it, it, it's an event which, um, which will involve some very senior people, both business people and, and people from governments, particularly in the region, I think. Um, so, it's, uh, so from that point of view, uh, it, it, it's a mark of, um, uh, of confidence in Cambodia. Um, the other point, though, I think, from the Cambodian point of view, is that, is that it will mean the presence here of... Uh, business leaders of, of uh, sort of profile who perhaps haven't visited here before, an opportunity for those people to find out about uh, what Cambodia is like, what the business environment is like, what the possibilities are in terms of investment. And that's obviously an, an attractive and potentially very useful thing for Cambodia. Mm, yeah, thanks. And um, more broadly about the actual forum this year, what do you think is the significance of the theme chosen, which is youth, technology and growth? Well, all, all those, certainly in the context of Cambodia, all those are important issues. This is a very young country. There, there are um, very large numbers of young people uh, each year joining the, joining the workforce. It's a country that over the last, uh, the last 15 years or so has maintained very high growth rates. It's among the, 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 the top half dozen um, in the world. Uh, the last few years, the growth rate has been around 7%. Um, and I think it's worth noting that it's not only the uh, it's not only the, the 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 gross growth rate, if I can put it like that, that, that that's been impressive. It's also impressive the way that that growth has um, has had an impact on poverty and on the numbers of people living in poverty. The uh, Cambodia has been um, one of the most successful, least developed countries in terms of meeting the Millennium Development Goals, uh, in terms of ad addressing. Uh, poverty in, in income terms, um, but also uh, some of the impacts that poverty has in terms of access to health, uh, education services and so on. And we've seen over the last years, we've seen extremely impressive progress in Cambodia. Um, technology uh, in, in today's, uh, today's uh, economy uh, is obviously also an important theme. Um, modern technologies are going to be changing the nature uh, of industry, changing the nature of employment. Um, so I think those are all those are all themes which, uh, certainly in the context of Cambodia, and I think in the context of, Cam of ASEAN more widely, uh, are extremely important at the moment. Yeah, thanks. And keeping with the, the theme of technology, do you feel like the, the digital revolution that we're sort of undergoing in the world right now, can that really bolster regional connectivity in ASEAN and support bottom-up integration rather than top-down policies? Uh, yes, certainly it can. And, and again, just looking at Cambodia, which I know better than ASEAN as a whole, mm. but just looking at Cambodia, um, connectivity has changed uh, at all recognition over the last 10-15 years. Um, and that's, it, it, it means uh, a huge and different situation in terms of, uh, in terms of communications. Um, there is a, there's room for greater penetration of, of, of mobile phones and so on and, and of internet access, but it's already um, it, it's made great leaps over the last years. So just in terms of communications linkages, uh, things have changed very radically here. In terms of the access to, to information, to knowledge and to opportunities that, that, that uh, internet connections provide, Again, that's that's changed. I think the figure is something like forty-five percent um, uh, of the population have uh, access to the internet, which you know that that that's, that that may not be high uh, compared to the U.S. or to European countries, but it's um, it's a very big change from a few years ago. Uh, and I think 
I, I think also uh, if you combine that with uh, the, the changes that are taking place and are going to take place in ASEAN in terms of in terms of lowering of barriers to trade and to movement uh, of goods of uh, capital and of people, I think we're going to see a, a situation that's changing very radically uh, over the next few years. Yeah. Interesting. The other aspect that's interesting, which 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 is going to is going to take more time, is is the is the shift in in terms of in terms of employment, in terms of industry in Cambodia towards higher tech uh, industries. Uh, the the very impressive growth rates that I mentioned um, have at least on the on the, on the industrial side they, they they've been driven. Uh, by very strong growth, in particular in the garment and footwear manufacturing sectors, those are traditionally um, they're, they're sectors which are very mobile and tend to go to areas where there's a there's a there's a perhaps relatively low, low skilled uh, workforce um, available at relatively low wages, and that's something which Cambodia has taken very effective advantage of, partly. Uh, driven by the access that Cambodia has to to some of the major markets, including to the EU uh, under the Everything But Arms deal, which means that Cambodia's exports, other than the, the theoretical case of, uh, of armaments, um, Cambodia's exports to the, the EU uh, don't face uh, either uh, tariff barriers or quotas. And Cambodia has taken very good advantage of that over the last few years in terms of, as I said, of, of garment and footwear exports. But over the next few years, um, we would certainly hope, and, and I know that the Cambodian government hopes, to see uh, Cambodia moving up the value chain in terms of industry. And again, that brings us back to, to technology issues. Um, I think Cambodia is looking to attract, uh, over the coming years, a different kind of investment. Since 1999, the World Economic Forum has tried to shift towards a, a more inclusive approach that focuses on inviting a more diverse group of stakeholders and the World Economic Founder Klaus Schwab termed this as to have everybody in the boat. How can this approach benefit both ASEAN and the World Economic Forum? First answer to that is, is, is that uh, I'm, I'm not very sure of the detail of, um, of how those aspects of the uh, of the forum in Cambodia are going to be managed, we're not directly involved. This is this is essentially a, it's essentially a private sector mm -hmm. uh, initiative, and while I've I've seen what's been uh, what's been published by the World Economic Forum about their plans for Cambodia, I don't know exactly how it's going to operate in in in, in those terms of outreach, um, but I th I certainly think there's there, there's value. Uh, in trying to bring in communities that go beyond just the, the top business people who are the traditional centre of these events, top business people and, and senior government people, perhaps to involve, uh, involve parliaments, to involve civil society, to, 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 to try and reach out I mean, in, in line with, with, with the overall objectives of the, the, the World Economic Forum, which, which go beyond simply um, encouraging business. But, but it, I think it sees itself as, as, as encouraging um, encouraging economic development, which is which is in the interests of all. Yeah. And um, you you mentioned um, governments and businesses engaging with civil society, and I know particularly for ASEAN, youth is a very important part of that. Mm -hmm. um, do you see any ways that specifically government and businesses can build trust with the youth for building confidence for the belief and future of the youth? I, I think the most important thing. Um, it, it, the, the most important thing in a country like Cambodia is to is to focus on education. Um, the, the 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 thing that will make the biggest difference for young people in Cambodia in terms of their future opportunities is, is to ensure that they have a, a, a solid education, both at the both both in terms of basic general education and then subsequently in terms of um, uh, in terms of skills and vocational training. And again, I know that's something that the, the government of Cambodia takes very seriously. We, as the European Union, have for some years been uh, had, had education as, as one of the main uh, focal areas of our cooperation with the, with, with, with the Royal Government of Cambodia. We're actually focusing mainly on primary education and on lower secondary education as the, the basis of everything that comes afterwards. But we also recognise the importance, as I said, of, of uh, vocational training and of, of, of skills for employment. Uh, 
And again, that links back to the point I made earlier about, about Cambodia moving away from being essentially a supplier of, of low-skilled labour and moving up the value chain. Mm. One of the things that's going to be really important in making that possible uh, is to ensure that, um, that, that the young people who are, who are entering the, the, the labour market are entering with, with the kind of skills that employers are looking for. Yeah, that's true. And that's a, a good idea about how that can be done in ASEAN, but for sort of global challenges that we're facing at the moment, such as sluggish global demand, climate change, increasing protectionism, populism, and slow growth in emerging markets, um, what role do you foresee the World Economic Forum on ASEAN having in addressing these challenges? I think it's an opportunity, an important opportunity for some of those issues to be discussed. I mean, there are issues which are the, the, the kind of issues you're, you, you were describing are, are big issues at the global scale. There are issues which require uh, cooperation um, also at the global scale. I, climate change, particularly, is, is an example of, of, of something that can only be addressed by the countries of the world working together. I think if, if, if the private sector um, uh, are working with governments to address those issues, if everybody's working in the same direction, that's, that, that's clearly something that's very positive. Mm. And um, so you talked about climate change as well. Do you think that in the face of something like climate change, do you have any ideas about how governments and business leaders can share responsibilities in issues like that? Well, for, for, for governments, um, the, the, I think the most important thing is to, is, is, is to push forward with the, the, the work that led up to the, um, the climate summit uh, in Paris the year before last, um, because uh, the, the uh, um, as I said, this is something which really can only be addressed by the, the, the countries of the world working together. The Paris uh, Agreement on Climate Change um, set out a framework for that work and set out a, a, a set of responsibilities which, which each country needs to, needs to go away and work on. And taking that forward, implementing that as fast and as effectively as possible is absolutely vital. Um, Part of the job of addressing climate change is to create the right sort of market incentives for for business to take the necessary actions in shifting from um, essentially from a, from a high carbon development path to a, or growth path to a low carbon growth path. Um, that requires considerable changes to the way businesses operate in many sectors and the way consumers operate as well, for that matter. Um, those are things which are where it's up to governments to, 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 to set the framework, um, as I say, to provide the incentives, whether that's through tax systems, through, through the creation of, of, of better functioning carbon markets, through regulation, uh, through any number of approaches. Uh, but if businesses uh, are ready to grasp that challenge, and, and, and to move ahead quickly, uh, that, that can make a difference too. If, they, if they're leaders rather than simply followers of, uh, uh, of policies set by governments. Um, it can make a difference in terms of how quickly we can, we can really a, a, a address the uh, levels of um, greenhouse gas emissions, which are ultimately, is ultimately what we're trying to do here. Um, but I think, uh, I think there's a lot to be gained by businesses which, which um, which can identify new approaches and new technologies now and put themselves into in, in, into a strong position to take advantage of what over time is, is undoubtedly going to be an increasing demand for, for uh, lower carbon technologies. Earlier you talked about um, Cambodia's achievement in being able to host this uh, forum this year, but based on the history and experience, what do you, how do you see the role of Cambodia in working with other countries within this framework of the World Economic Forum to address challenges? I, I think, uh, essentially, I think Cambodia, Cambodia um, can uh, approach this uh, as an equal with the other countries who are taking, taking part. Given that the, that the forum is focused on ASEAN, I, I think that um, uh, 
the, the ASEAN context and the context of, in, of, of increasing economic integration in ASEAN over the coming years uh, will be an important part of the, the, the background against which these discussions are taking place. And Cambodia, like other ASEAN members, has, has clearly an important role to play in, in making a success of that. Um, it's, 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 uh, it's a challenging agenda. It's, it's an agenda on which um, the EU also is uh, providing some assistance in terms of support for the Cambodian government, particularly in, uh, um, in automation of processes, in, in, in putting, for example, um, some aspects of business registration and uh, customs processes online uh, and streamlining those processes. And that's something we've been very pleased to, to provide support on over the last few years. Yeah, um, thank you. So we talked about the opportunities of um, this forum and the opportunities for mm -hmm. Cambodia, but what do you believe could be the outcomes of this forum this year? I think the most important with a forum like this is, is, is a better understanding on the part of all concerned of, of, of each other's approaches and what are the opportunities and, and what are the challenges. Um, as I said earlier, I think one of the important things here is that, is, is that there will be uh, a group of um, very senior business people in particular uh, in, in Cambodia. It's an opportunity for Cambodia to, to sell itself as, a, as, as an investment destination and perhaps to, 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 to listen as well and to understand what it is that, 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 um, that business looks for in terms of the investment environment. Thanks. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, no, I think that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Those are all the questions that I'd have. I'd like to thank Mr. Ambassador for taking his time today to join us for this interview.